I'd like to share with you something that may uh, sound simple, but hopefully it'll be thought-provoking for you. Um, and the title is, Why Does the Devil Tempt You? Why does the devil tempt you? And I'm thinking in terms of, uh, you know, what is the real reason? Um, <clears throat> so as I began to think of it, I began to think, okay, well, we always say the devil tempts you to cause you to sin. Okay, well, why does the devil tempt you to sin? Okay, well, then we go, well, the devil tempts you to sin so that you will go to hell. Okay, so why does the devil want you to go to hell? Because it ain't like the cartoons. He's not going to be lord and king over hell and laugh at all your your torment that he puts you through he's going to be down there with you <clears throat> so what is what is the reason that he tempts you and you know we could even say well he doesn't like jesus so he wants to take everything that jesus has or he wants to turn people against jesus or i don't know but i have a little bit different uh take on that a little bit different feel of what uh, that might involve. And I did. I came to this by thinking about Jesus as our example. Jesus is our life, but he's our example of life too. Uh, and we see that throughout the Gospels, that it is his, him who is the example. And then it is in the, the epistles we see that he's literally the life. So whatever example Jesus gives us, he also is the fulfillment of what that will take. In other words, he's not just the example we copy. He's the example of what he will be within us as our life. And so t with that in mind, uh, I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1 and read several verses there. Running along this line of Jesus as the example, and then we'll look at some other scriptures in the New Testament and Old Testament also. <laughs> Beginning with verse 1 of Matthew 4. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Okay. For whatever reason, that sentence doesn't make sense to most Christians because maybe we, excuse me, maybe we don't really understand why we're tempted. So it doesn't make sense. It seems like, that's going contrary to the very thoughts, the, the, the Christian or the religious thoughts that we have concerning. So I'm going to read that first verse again. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. All right. Verse 2, And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterwards and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Father. Verse 5, Then the devil taketh him, then the devil, devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Okay, verse 7. Um, Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, and verse 8, And the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Okay, and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. All right, so Jesus is the main example for us in, in all things, and then he's going to be the life fulfiller when he is in us. Um, what is the devil doing? 
The devil knew who the Son of God was. He had been in eternity with, with the, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. He knew who the Son of God was, but he didn't know who he was in that body. He didn't know if that really was the Son of God. That body looked like everybody else's body. So how is he to know you're really the son of God? Because he doesn't have a halo and he doesn't have all these things that's going to identify him as that. So what is the devil tempting him about? He is tempting him to see if he is the son of God. He's tempting him to see if he's the son of God. And as I said, Satan knew that he was, but he's veiled. Remember, he's veiled in this veil of flesh, and the scriptures declare that. So, so he's tempting him, knowing that Jesus is a certain way, because he knew him before, you know, beforehand, before Jesus came down into the earth. So he tempted him, but to see if he was a certain way, because Jesus is a certain way, and humans are a certain way. So, what is the devil's method of determination, to determine if he's the Son of God? His method is this, and I'm not talking about the story now, I'm talking about how he tempts you and why he tempts you, okay? I'm talking about you. This is his method of tempting. If you are a Son of God, then do these things. If you are a son of God, then do these things. He's looking to see if you're a son of God by Christ. He's looking to see if Christ is in you. He's tempting you to check you out, to see what he's dealing with. Just another human? Or is he dealing with somebody that has Christ formed in them as the son? All right, so um, one of the first temptations is turn these uh, stones into bread. Um, he's saying to him, <clears throat> um, feed yourself. Well, Jesus fed the 5,000, but he wouldn't do, he wouldn't feed himself. He said, no, I'm not going to do that. He said, I, I trust the father and every word that comes out of his mouth. Every, every response by the son was toward the father. Uh, it's a dead giveaway. It's a dead giveaway. This son is toward his father, and that's the way he thinks, and that's the view that he gets. So then, uh, so then the devil says, well, you know, throw yourself off the temple and get God to do a miracle to prove that you are special. Well, Jesus isn't special. He's the father's son. It's not about special. It's about being the father's son. And so he tempts him to do that. And he said, no, you know, I will not tempt my, the Lord thy God, which is his father. The Lord thy God is his father. So then finally he says, bow down and worship me and, you know, do whatever it takes to get ahead. I'll give you kingdoms. Well, Jesus isn't like man. Man will go, I'll do whatever it takes to get ahead. So man is tempted. But the Son of God is not tempted. He said, I will worship the Father only. I bow down to Him. That's the way it is. All right, so the devil knew the Son was there. He didn't know it by any facial or any other thing except tempting Him. If you're a Son of God, let's see what a son, the Son of God does. See? And that's what He does to you. He's constantly tempting you to see if Christ comes out of you or you come out of you. He's constantly tempting you to see where you are in the sun. His temptation is once he finds out it's not the sun, he can do whatever he wants with you. He'll tempt you with this and draw you with that and da 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 da. And even when we hold to our Christian ethics uh, at times, there's always something where we'll finally give in, but not the sun because the sun is toward his father. All right, so tempting. There, you probably know this, but there is two different Greek terms. One is the tempting, and that word usually, but not always, but it's always in the Greek the same word, is translated as tempting. The devil tempts, but God tests. Two different Greek words 
and usually translated tempting and test, although there are a few times that the translators weren't true to that, that translation. Um, so God wants to know if the Son's in you. God's testing you to see if it's the Son. The devil wants to know for a different reason, but he wants to know if he's dealing with the Son or is he just dealing with another human that doesn't have the Son. So, um, and then sometimes, sometimes both is going on at the same time because God may use the devil to tempt you so that he can find out if the Son is in you. You say, that's crazy. Well, let me read verse 1 again. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. There it is. Sometimes God, literally the Spirit of God, leads you to the devil so that he will tempt you. But he's not tempting you to sin. I mean, you think about it. The temptations of Jesus were none of those had anything to do with rank sin or the things we call stealing or adultery or any of the things, any of the horrible, the horrible sins of the flesh that we do or whatever. The devil's temptation was, if you're the son of God, I want to know it. That was his whole point. And that's, that's the whole point of the father. The father isn't testing you to see if you would sin or not. The devil is, but he's using that test, not not just in relationship to sin, the devil is using that tempting in relationship to find out who's alive in you, another human being or the Son of God. Okay, so, um, so we know that testing is done by fire. So I'll give you a scripture. That's 1 Peter 1.7. 1 Peter 1.7 says this, that the trial of your faith, the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And the word appearing there is the word manifesting. It's the appearance through manifestation. The sun is appearing through manifestation. Not talking about appearing in the air. It's not using that word. That's another Greek word. It is the appearing of the sun manifesting through us after we've been tried in the fire so that the gold, which is that sun, can be made manifest. And so what is, what is the testing doing? Well, you put gold, you put uh, gold that has impurities in it, you put it in the fire, and what is the end result is that it begins to separate the dross from the gold. Okay, so that's the purpose of fire. Uh, gold will make it through the fire, through the test. It'll be gold. Gold will be gold, and dross will be dross. And gold will go go towards the Father. So, so kind of what I'm saying here, and I'm, you know, is that the tempting of the enemy is not just trying to get regular people to sin. I mean, sinners are already sinners. You know that. Most people don't need the devil to help them sin. They're already doing it. The flesh, the, the old nature will do that. But he don't know who's in you just like he didn't know who was in Jesus' body. And he wants to know because that's a different deal with him because he knows Jesus isn't going to respond to all this kind of stuff. All right, so um, I wrote down lamb attitudes or man attitudes. Lamb attitudes or man attitudes. <laughs> all right. So what is fire and what is gold? Fire is trials through situations that we will either manifest the sun or we will manifest us. And we will, they will test how much gold, how much of the sun is there. And that's what that last verse said, that the trial of your faith being so much precious to God because gold comes forth. It's amazing what the scripture is actually saying there. And and gold equals the divine nature. That's what's going on. It's not doctrine. Uh, gold is not uh, good works. It's not the amount of ministry. All this 
fire that it's talking about has nothing to do with doctrine or good works or, you know, if you'll hold the Christian line for the glory of God. It's will Christ come forth? Will gold come forth? Or is it going to be us? That's the whole, whole point. That's the point of testing and that's the point of temptation. Okay, so um, does fire, when it comes forth, bring forth Christ? Well, you have the tabernacle as an example. And the tabernacle, uh, in that tabernacle, you have the, the candlestick. And the candlestick represents the church, the seven-branch candlestick. And you get a representation of that over in the, uh, the book of Revelation, uh, where Jesus appears in the midst of the candlestick. And that's the whole point. That the gold, there's the gold, right in the middle of it, right in the midst of it. Jesus is supposed to be in the midst of us. Jesus is supposed to be in the midst of the, the church. Uh, he's the gold. We're, we're the dross, or we're the thing that is, that is being beaten into his image. And that's what it goes on to say. Um, the candlestick is formed as the church by fire. And by beaten gold, that's how that candlestick was formed. By fire and by beaten gold. So that's, that's Christ crucified. That's the beaten part is Christ crucified. And it relates to, or will we go with him through the sufferings of Christ in the trials and let him come forth? Or will we be separate from him and we'll be uh, not bearing about his dying, but bearing about our dying or bearing about our crying or bearing about our, our um, fears or bearing about, you know, just acting like a regular old person that doesn't have the life of Christ within him, doesn't have the sun in him. It's just we're, we've got these problems and we've got this stuff and where's God? Well, he's supposed to be in us. That's who we're supposed to be. That's, that's, you know, where is God? He's, he's right here. He's inside of us. But the Father's saying, well, where is he? I know he's in there, but the devil wouldn't be able to figure it out because he brings the temptations and the goal doesn't come up. We come up. And so, um, so just a couple other scriptures. 1 Peter 4, chapter, or chapter 4, verses 12 through 13 and um, here, we've alluded to this before in these blogs, but here again is this, this amazing thing that we keep thinking strange what's going on. We keep thinking strange. This is just the earth. This is the devil. This is bad circumstances. This is mean people. This is, okay. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. It's trying you, but you think it's a strange thing, not a trial to see if Christ is going to come forth. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ, of, of his suffering. You, this is, you are partaking of his suffering, being with him in this spirit, through it. Or we're being with us in it through our soul through it but rejoice in as much as you're partakers of christ and christ's and his sufferings um, that when his glory shall be revealed well where's his glory going to be revealed well we go when his glory is revealed when he comes back in the clouds it's going to be so great but but right now it's hard his glory is supposed to be revealed in us Christ in you, the hope of glory being revealed. Um, uh, when his glory, his glory, that's the gold, shall be revealed, ye shall be glad also with exceeding, exceeding joy. I am so glad I was with him in this. I am so glad that I'm not just thinking everything strange. I'm so glad that I understand that the temptations of the devil or the trying of God is trying to get his son. God wants to know what's in there. The devil wants to know what's in there. Those are, that's a whole nother realm above this earth. And then finally, just one scripture. 
and we'll end with this. It's in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 18. I'm sorry, I get excited about this stuff. I just love the Lord so much. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Get the gold that's tried in the fire. He didn't say, I want you to have gold, streets of gold. This is the way people talk. God wants you to have gold, streets of gold, mansions of gold, everything gold. No, he wants gold tried in the fire and it comes forth. The gold comes forth, not the dross, not us, but Christ. That thou mayest be rich. Oh, glory to God. Buy this gold. Buy into it. Buy into this gold that's tried by fire that you may be rich. This is you being rich. This is the riches of God. Christ is the riches of God. And white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. In other words, just see in your flesh. The shame of your nakedness is just see in your flesh instead of seeing him. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. Oh, praise God that we may see. Praise God that we may see that the devil's temptation isn't just trying to send me to hell. I don't think he gets that big a kick out of that. I think he's just who he is. And, and he's not just trying to upset Jesus. He knows that he cannot do to Jesus what he can do to us. And Jesus knows that when his body is filled with him and his spirit and his nature, Jesus knows that we're going to be safe from the enemy. We'll be safe from temptations because the temptation is just to find out if he's in there and we'll be safe from it because he is in there. And he is not just in there where I accepted him on my heart and salvation. We're talking about in there as our life, our nature, as not just as our example in a Bible, but it is the living Christ. God, David said, I want to know the living God, the living God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> I'm just... Oh... I'm, I just love Jesus, don't you? I just want him more and more. And my heart just cries out. And I want the Father to get his son. I want the Father to be blessed and to, be, to, to see that gold tried with fire come forth and it be counted as riches. And, and, and he'll, he counts us as having great riches. And, and it pleases him to have his son. And I don't want to my nakedness always showing and you know the flesh always showing and not being clothed upon with him you know put ye on the lord jesus christ and so let's pray father in the name of your son in the name of your son in the name of jesus may your spirit uh, not just lead us away from temptation in that sense, but as, the, as what happened to you and will happen to your body, may the Spirit take us to the temptations of the devil, knowing that Christ is the Son and the Son dwells in us, Father. And Father, I've just, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that you'll quicken us, you'll quicken our hearts, you'll quicken our minds, to not just one scripture that we might think is the end all of something, but that we begin to evaluate all of the scriptures in light of the temptations that come and of the testings that come. And that as we look at them, we are truly dealt with. We are truly, truly see that these things, whether it be the devil or God, will work for good for the nature of Christ in us. Father, grow us up in that sun. Grow us all up. Lord, we're pressing in. We're pressing toward the mark of the prize in Him. And so we, we ask you to just keep us, keep quickening us to the desires of your heart and to earth, not earthly 
uh, ways of viewing things, but to rise above it into the very face of the Father and see his joy and the great joy and the glory that he sees coming forth when it's Christ in us. Father, we love you and we ask you to allow the Spirit of God to continue more and more and more, more of Jesus and less of us. We thank you. We thank you that we can pray that prayer. We thank you that that's our goal and our desire in this world and in our life and in our story. We thank you for it all in the sweet and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you again. Always, I always thank you for letting me share. Thank you so much. Thank you. And just keep pressing on. That's what I'm just, just keep going. Come on. You know, let's continue in his word and we shall know the truth and the truth will make us free. God bless you guys. Bye.